Okay, developers, welcome back. Now, in our community, there was a question about how to listen to transfer events, for example, on a public and deployed mainnet contract. This developer wanted to know what was needed and what does the code look like. So in this video, I'm going to quickly go over what we need to get started listening to events on mainnet using Ethers.js and Node.js. If you're new here, I'm Calvin Tora, and on Eat the Blocks, we help Web2 developers transition into Web3. Now, to get started, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need the ABI of the token in question. We're also going to need the contract address of this token. Then we're going to need Node.js installed with Ethers and .env. And then we'll also need a WebSocket ID. We can either get that from Infura or from Alchemy. So I'm going to set up a dummy project. I'm just going to make a directory, call it listen to events. Then I'm going to do npm init y to initialize the node project. Then npm install ethers and .env. Now over on etherscan, we are going to need to get the ABI and the contract address. So in the search bar, I can put in USDT or Tether, and that will bring up the page for that token. Now here we see the main page. If we scroll down, we can see all the different methods on this contract that are being fired. Now for this example, we're interested in the transfer event. Now if we look inside the contract, we can see if we search for event, we'll see the default transfer and the default approval. So we're going to use the transfer. Now, this is not actually the page that I want on Etherscan. If we head back up and go to contract and click on that URL, we can actually get access to the contract and the ABI. We scroll down and copy the ABI. Now, inside our project, we can create a JSON file, and this is where we'll paste our contract ABI. Then we can close that and head over to our main file. You can call it whatever you want, index or main. I'm going to call it listen to tether.js. Now inside here, we are going to require ethers, and then we're going to pull in the ABI that we just saved and call it USDT ABI. We're also going to need .env, so we're going to require that. Then inside our .env file, we're going to need to have our private key from either Infura or Alchemy. So we'll just call this Alchemy WebSocket because that's the one I have. And then you just place your private key in here. Now back in the main file, we're going to create an async function. You can call it whatever you want. We're going to need the address of the contract that we're looking to monitor. So for this example, we need the USDT address. Back over on Etherscan, if I scroll back up to the top, I can just copy the address from Etherscan. We're going to place that in the USDT address variable, and then we're going to create a new provider. So an ethers.providers.websocket provider. And this will allow us to keep an open connection to our contract and listen for events in real time. Then we pass in the WebSocket URL that's given to us either by Alchemy or by Infura. And from here, I can pull in my private key from my .env file. Don't forget, we need to use backticks on this URL if we want to inject a variable on the end. So here, I'm going to use process.env.alchemywebsocket because that's what I named it in my .env file. Then we're going to instantiate our contract using ethers, so ethers.contract, and that takes the address of the contract, the contract ABI, and our provider. Now that I have a contract, I can use contract.on and pass in the event I want to listen to. So here we're going to use transfer. Now transfer takes several parameters. We have from, to, and value. Now if we look back at the Tether token contract, we can see that the event transfer takes a from address, a to address, and a value. But we can also pass in event, which will give us back additional details and data on this event. Now to format things nicely, I'm going to create an object called info. I'm going to add a key from, to, and the value. Now because the value is a big number, I'm going to convert this into something more human readable using the utils on ethers. So ethers.utils.format units, and I'm going to pass in the value. Unlike most other tokens, USDT actually uses six decimals compared to 18 for others. So we're going to pass in six here to format it correctly. And then for the data, we'll just pass in the rest of the event that we get back. Now to make this more readable for myself, I always like to stringify my data with a little bit of formatting. Now, if we run this, we can see on my terminal that it took 58 seconds to give me back a response. But then we get back all of this data. And right at the top, we have the key for value. And that is 4994, formatted from a big number. Now, if I take this transaction hash and I head back over to Etherscan, I can paste that in, go to the transaction and see that 
that my details match up exactly. And the value is 4994, which matches up exactly with what we see in a terminal. And if we scroll down, we get a lot more data, but we can also see that the event is transfer and that's what we are listening to. Now this is just to show you how to get started. You can do whatever you want with this information. Maybe you want to save it in a database to create some kind of analytics or maybe you want to pull it into your front end DAP. But whatever your plan is, this is how we get started to listen to events on the blockchain. I'll leave a link to this cleaned up repo down below. But that's it for this quick video. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.